So I always knew that I was different and that my brain didn't work the same way as people around me, but I just didn't know why. A common theme for LGBTQ plus individuals is that we'll grow up in a environment or go through a school system or have families that are directly opposed to who we are. And I think that we come out of that with a lot of trauma and shame surrounding what makes us different. Always knowing I was trans wasn't a thing because I didn't know what trans was. I think my earliest memory of trans without having the word is having a fight with my dad. <laughs> um, and I was maybe like five or six and I was fighting with him about why I had to wear a shirt outside and my brothers didn't because to me I was the same as my brothers. And then after that fight, I remember every time that I would have like free playtime by myself, I would just get butt naked and stare in the mirror and be like, all right, this is what I'm working with. Hate it. And that's like my earliest memory of gender dysphoria that I have. And then countless others that just peppered in there looking back now. Going into high school, I remember studying coming of age movies to like create a personality that was like desirable woman. So it worked, you know, I just became a mask of what I thought I should be, if that makes sense and I got heavy into drug use, I drank a lot, and I would mold myself into just different personalities and to fit in with different people. And by the time I got to college and sobered up a little bit, I had to take a hard look at why I was different. I had unlearned a lot of stereotypes that I had picked up growing up, had to unlearn a lot of biases, and it took me meeting my first non-binary friend be like talking about gender and being like, oh yeah, I feel that way too, I feel that way too. You think the way I think, this is home, like, this feels like community, but like, I'm not trans. <laughs> and then now, you know, I'm laughing at that. And my life just turned around and here I am now. Like almost five years in, which feels wild to me. It makes me feel whole. I think that's the best way that I can describe it. I think from the moment I got my first testosterone shot, everything in my life felt correct. No more mental anguish, no more not wanting to be part of things. And having that sense of wholeness gave me the ability to seek the things that I wanted and loved. Like I never thought that I'd meet someone and marry them and fall madly in love with somebody and have a partner like Caitlin. And transitioning gave that to me, you know? It's like everything I ever wanted, I have. Or I'm on my way to having. I think about not having to call health insurance and I like could shed tears. Just being able to be finished and be able to live my life, I think about this a lot, like cis people just get to live and go after what their goals are and I feel like being trans is like a block on existing. That's why when I think about things that are happening in Texas where there's a possibility where they won't have access to the care that they need and I think about how it saved my life. I just wish that I could show more people that it's life-saving and have them believe it, you know? We're not monsters. We just want to exist. We want to go to the bathroom in peace. We want to live the life that you have authentically already. Um, and that's it. So to my knowledge, there's four different types of bottom surgery available. Um, I chose RFF phalloplasty, which involves taking your forearm and using the skin graft from it. Uh, taking a nerve and some blood vessels, rolling it up into a little burrito, and creating a new eggplant. One of my biggest pet peeves when I was searching for tattoo studios is in their consult reply, they'd be like, we're sorry that you hate your tattoo. Let us help you get rid of it. And I really love this tattoo. It was my first big tattoo that I got. I've always had a connection to The Legend of Zelda, and I'm getting rid of it only because this is the only thing that's gonna transfer right here. And to me, aesthetically, that's just not what I want. After there's gonna be a significant amount of scar tissue here, so I won't be able to re-tattoo on this for a couple years, but my plan is to finally finish A Legend of Zelda sleeve, kind of like as tribute to what I've lost and what I'm bringing back. And my goal is the upper part is gonna be like Link holding a sword with like stained glass, whatever behind him. And then down here, it'll shift into like the rough parts of the games, you know, the boss battles. And hopefully I'll be able to tattoo on my scar tissue, but I won't no yet, you know, so that's my hope. I'm gonna get this exact same tattoo, just in a different place. Be patient with your transition because 
the mistake that I made is when I was like, I'm trans. I felt like I had lost my whole life, like waiting to figure out who I was and I wanted to just start and transition quickly and like just start living. Cause I found a habit where I wouldn't want to make friends or be intimate with people or learn about interests like D&D. I waited until I transitioned cause I was like, I don't want to be part of anything I like until I like me, if that makes sense. I started testosterone in April of 2017 and then I scheduled my top surgery for June. So it was like, a couple months and then I was going in. And I just unfortunately didn't research enough for what was available to me. I just picked a top surgeon that somebody had mentioned in passing and she ended up botching my surgery. Yeah, it's devastating. It's something I'd waited my whole life to have and it would be that way for the rest of my life because insurance is like, you have one shot and that's it. And I had fundraised for that surgery so I also felt like I had let all of these people down in my community that were there for me even though it wasn't my fault. And so I fought the state of California. It was like every day I was writing a letter, I was writing an appeal, I was making a phone call. And eventually I won that case and they said that they would cover an out-of-network surgeon in San Francisco, Dr. Scott Mosser. I ended up doing an in-person party fundraiser and I was able to raise the surgery deposit. So they covered all of it except for the surgery deposit and I was able to have it redone. And he saved my life, he saved my chest, my future essentially. I think one of my first TikToks I made, I was had to pull over in my car because I just had started crying, realizing that bottom surgery was a possibility for me. And I was like, I can't, like this is the most euphoric moment I've ever felt in my life. I wish that I could show this to people and they could watch it and be like, oh, that's, that's what gender affirming care is for somebody. If I can reach one person or two people or like a parent of a trans kid and just see that there's like a 31 year old dude out there like chilling, living his life, married, a regular person, it might change their mindset about what being trans is. You know, just using the right name and pronouns is enough to like show your kid that you love them and you're there for them. I think my parents had a hard time with it. And then when they came around and saw how happy that I had become and how like my life had come together, because in their eyes, I'd always been like depressed and lost and like damaged, and they saw that wiped, wiped clean, you know? Just continue loving your child and what other people think doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this is someone you brought into the world and someone that you should support in this world, regardless of how afraid you are that they'll be treated. Because then they know that they have you. I know that in my early transition, a lot of people walked on eggshells around me because they were afraid of asking the wrong questions, and it's, the only wrong questions are like medically invasive questions, you know, and like, what's your old name? Other than that, I feel like it's pretty easy to talk to us. Hi, I'm Sebastian. I'm from San Diego. And among many other things, I'm also a trans man. If you're cis and you're watching this, we're just like you. If you're a trans and you're watching this, you matter. Your voice matters and you are loved.